If you're trying to find a product to sell on Amazon, this is the video for you because I'm gonna walk you through on how I do product research to find products to sell on Amazon. Now, before I hop into the tutorial, my name is Pretty, and on this channel, I talk about how you can build wealth by using the web, and I primarily talk about Amazon FBA. I'm a six-figure private label seller on Amazon, and I wanna walk you through on how I actually find products and how I source them. Before I hop into the tutorial, I wanna let you know that I will be using Helium 10's Black Box tool to do this product research, and if you don't know what Helium Helium 10 is, it's the tool that you need in order to actually find products and to build your Amazon business. As a private label seller, this is the only tool that I use and it's literally how I found my first product. So I highly recommend them. There will be a link in the description that will give you a small little discount. And if you do use the link, it does help my channel. So I truly appreciate that. But let's hop over to my computer screen so we can help you find a product to sell on Amazon. All right, so I'm on helium10.com and we're gonna be using their tool called Black box to do product research and this is something that I do pretty much every single day in order to find products and to validate them and to really find products that I want to sell on Amazon. Now I highly recommend that you spend at least an hour per day doing product research and figuring out what ideas, what niches you wanna get into in order to actually start selling and to get things private labeled, okay? So you wanna spend time doing product research if you're serious about selling on Amazon, and this is exactly how I do it. So I go on to helium10.com, we're gonna use the black box tool, and if I'm looking this way, guys, it's because I'm on my laptop, okay? So bear with me, but I'm, we're gonna be using black box, and what we want to do is use black box to do the product research. And we're gonna be implementing criteria that fits what our budget is. So I like to use black box in order to do product research. And I've showed you guys how to do product research by using the keywords method. And if you don't know how to use the keywords method, I'll link my tutorial right here. But today we're gonna to be using the products. And what we're gonna do is figure out what products we want to sell on Amazon by using products, which sounds crazy, but it works. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is select a niche that I'm interested in getting into. So let's say I'm interested in the office and supplies niche. This is random, this is raw product research. I haven't done this ahead of time because I wanna show you how it actually works and how I actually do it. So here it is, um, I'm gonna go over to like I said, office products. So we're gonna click office products, okay? So what we wanna do is figure out how to go about things. Now, what I like to do is find products that are not super competitive. Um, and the way that you can do this is by entering in the review count. So let's say this product, we want the max number of reviews to be 200. There has to be players in that niche that have 200 or lower reviews because again, you wanna go into niches that are not super competitive and not super saturated. And this is a way to actually do that. So we wanna do review count 200, max reviews. I'm gonna do four star because I wanna find products that have issues with them so I could go in and make them better. So that is a little tip that you can use and implement to find products that actually need to be innovated, that need to be better um, because people are complaining about them and they have negative reviews. So now, what I want to do is also type in the monthly revenue. So minimum monthly revenue that I have to have is at least a thousand, but I want to do this to be a little higher. So I'm going to say 2000. And again, you guys know just because the monthly revenue is 2000 doesn't mean that's what you're going to get back. You only get back, you know, roughly 30 to 50% of that because again, Amazon takes their 30% and there's so many fees associated. You got to source it and all of that. So you want to have a monthly revenue that is at least 2000. I tend to not even do products if the monthly revenue is anywhere below 5,000, to be honest. So, um, max, we'll leave that open. If you're a new seller, I recommend setting the max to maybe 15,000 because if you don't have a lot of capital, um, you don't want to do, you know, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in revenue. You will not be able to keep up with that demand. So, um, we'll leave that monthly sales. Now let's say you have a small budget and you're only able to order a certain amount of units, or you just want to find a product that doesn't do that many units because you don't have the capital to actually invest in that many units. I would enter in the units, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't have the issue. But if you do, you can enter in the max amount of units you wanna sell per month. So that's also a great way to, um, you know, kind of 
filter through some results. Now, you could of course go through brands. Now you can exclude certain brands. Like let's say we are in the office product niche and we don't wanna sell anything that's Dell, HP, Logitech, Apple. We can enter in all those brands here um, and kind of you know stray away from them. But I don't really want to exclude too many things. I wanna see what the raw results are and then we can filter some things out. So what I'm gonna do is search and you guys, you want to be changing the criteria up. Like you do not want to just continue to use the same criteria because every time you change the criteria up, you're getting different search results and that's exactly what you want to do. I never really run the same search over and over because there's really no point. You've already looked through those results. So what I like to do is take a notepad and I'll be like, okay, when I did research for products in Blackbox, I had the review count to four stars. I had the monthly revenue at least minimum was 2000. The maximum was 15,000. Whatever your criteria is, you wanna write that down. And then under that, you wanna write down potential product ideas. And when you keep running searches um, that are different, you wanna kind of have that data so you can look back and like, okay, this search actually got me more results. And this is the search that I found a product through. And then you have more data and literally data is key, that's why Helium 10 is so great. It gives you a lot of data and data really helps you make more educated decisions on which direction you should go in, okay? So so now the search went through and let's take a look at what products we found and what products are doing well and which ones aren't doing well. So the, I'm gonna walk you through how I look through it and how I source uh, products that I'm actually interested in, okay? So here I am, I am looking at this right now. So I see, a true drawer mobile file, which is interesting. Um, it's making around $24,000 per month. That is fairly high if I'm a new seller. Um, there is something wrong with it. So that is a good indication that this product needs to be innovated. It needs to be made better. If something's wrong with this product and you as a seller can come in and make that product better and dominate that niche. So this this is a, this is a good start, okay? so. Next, I see a calculator, I see thermal paper rolls, I see a Office Jet Pro series printer, um, binders, pencils. Now we wanna find a product that is innovatable, that you can differentiate, and that isn't super competitive. Now, what I like to do is I don't really stray away from products that are bigger because I know a lot of sellers are like, I don't wanna sell big products because you know the storage fees and all the fees associated with big products. Well, I see that as an opportunity because sellers aren't gonna be willing to spend resources on that product, but that also means that there are not that many competitors in that niche. So, you know, there's always pros and cons to things. I don't stray away. When people say, oh, I, you shouldn't do glass products. Well, that's an opportunity for me. Um, if you're not doing a glass product, I'll try it. And people also say you shouldn't do seasonal products, but if you plan ahead of time, you can be really successful in seasonal products as well. So just because people say don't do this doesn't mean that you shouldn't try it because it might work for you. Just because someone else isn't doing it doesn't mean that you can't, okay? So always keep your mind open, always be willing to take risks because Amazon is literally a game of risk. Whoever takes the most risk and whoever is the most comfortable with taking um, risk and whoever is the most comfortable with being uncomfortable is going to succeed on Amazon. So now I also like to continue to look through the products and what I'm gonna do is start opening these products up as well and taking a deeper dive and seeing if they're worth my time. So here I am, I am gonna continue to look and let's see if I can find anything that's cool. Now, this is kind of interesting. I'm gonna open this up and see how it is. Now, what this is, is a round activities table. Now, this is just a table that maybe little kids use, you know, to do things. I think this is, yeah, it's a little kid's table. And what I would do, wow, they have a lot of variations, which is interesting. What I would do is look through this product. I also like to look at the reviews and see how the reviews are doing. So they have a 3.3 rating. Now I'm gonna take a look at the one-star reviews and see what's wrong with this table. Now, disappointed, has not been put it together when I arrived at my preschool. I love the size of the table and the style, but noticed a small chip on the edge of the tape on the edge of top of table until the next morning. Very disappointed. Immediately went back to Amazon 
to return his defective table and to order another one. Hopefully the replacement table will be in perfect condition. Well, honestly, I hate when people give one star reviews for something that isn't the product's fault. Like the table might be a little chip, but that's probably Amazon's fault for the way they stored it and something that could be a manufacturing issue, but it's probably an issue um, due to storage. So it sucks that you get one star reviews off of things that you can't really control. What I would do if I got a review like this, I would um, vo go to the voice of customer in Seller Central and I would kind of uh, report this because it's not my fault. It's not an actual product defectiveness. Like it's not like a leg was missing. It was the way the storage was handled and it's kind of a small issue. So I might consider, um, you know, reaching out to the customer or reaching out to Amazon regarding this review. But having said that, nothing's really wrong with the table. She liked the size. She liked how it was, there's a little defectiveness and this product unfortunately got a one star review off of that and that really dramatically lowered their rating um, because it only has seven reviews. So if you get one star review and you only have seven reviews, ugh, it's not looking too good for you. So um, this was just a product idea. Obviously I'm not, I'm not gonna do it because nothing's wrong with the table. The table's perfectly fine. We're gonna look for more product ideas, continue looking through this. Let's see if I can find anything else. And again, I'm doing this on spot, just showing you how I do product research, how I go through the different niches and how I actually find products to sell. So um, continue walking through this large gaming mouse pad. Let's see what this is. Oh, interesting. So this is a huge pad that allows you to um, use when you're gaming. So what I would do is take a look and see if there's anything that I can differentiate. Now, they do have some designs here. Um, they're cool designs, but maybe I wanna do a different design. Maybe they don't have a design like a full black mat. Maybe I want a full black one and this isn't offering it. So you can come in if this revenue was worth it, if this is a product that you're interested in, what you can do is innovate that product, come in and sell a black version of this product. This product is doing decent. Um, we can take a look at the revenue by using the Helium 10 Chrome extension. I love this extension, literally use it every day. Um, and I'll look at the x-ray extension to see how much monthly revenue this product is making. So here I am, I'm gonna take a look at how much this product is making. And ooh, it's only making $2,000 per month. Now you might be saying to yourself, wow, it's making $2,000 per month, that's great. As a beginner, sure, you, you might wanna consider doing this product, but it is a lot of work to private label a product that's only doing $2,000 per month. I highly recommend at least 5,000, sweet spot 7,000, because you do have to source the product, get it private labeled, you need brand registry. Well, you don't really need brand registry, but it is important if you're trying to actually build a brand. Um, and it's just a lot of work to actually private label products. So I don't really recommend doing it for a product that's only generating $2,000 per month. So we're gonna continue looking. And again, let's go back and maybe change the criteria up. And again, I run a lot of searches. I change the criteria up. And what I'm gonna do is go up and we're gonna go back to the products and edit filters. And we are gonna edit this filter and we want to maybe find the price now. So maybe I want to only source products that are 15 to $30. And the monthly sales, I'll leave that. Let's change the monthly revenue to 5,000 and max to 15,000. So this is more of a beginner friendly search. And so let's look at the products that we get from this. Now this product, we saw it earlier and I wanna just open it up and take a look. So this is a two mobile file cabinet with locks for home office under desk rolling filing cabinet. So basically it's a storage cabinet and you can use it in your office. What is wrong with this? So basically I like the price point, $129, probably is decent profit margins. Let's take a look at the one star reviews. Not a letter size cabinet. This cabinet does not support letter size file hangings, buyer be aware. I had to disassemble the entire thing. So frustrating, $20 refund. Aw, so they didn't get a full refund and I don't know why, but this customer is obviously not happy. Poor quality, not a file cabinet, not a file cabinet. So basically it doesn't fit files, which is a huge issue. 
if this is a filing cabinet and I'm getting it from my office, I need it to fit my files. So what I would do, let's say I want to do this product, I would go in Helium 10. I love using the Chrome extension again. I'm going to find um, out how much this is making per month. Come on. Sometimes you have to go back onto the main listing, Let's figure out how much it's making per month. So here we are. And let's see if this is worth me actually getting into. Now, I like that. It's making $20,000 per month. It is a higher price point, which is why it's able to do less units. It's only doing around 155 units per month, um, which is great. And it's generating $20,000 in revenue. So what I would do is find suppliers on Alibaba. If this was available, that's how I would go about it. It's not available right now. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So what I would do is basically go on alibaba.com and I would type in storage cabinet for office. And I would look at all of the results that they have and then we would go about that. So let me just show you how I do that. So um, storage cabinet and then we'll do for office. Oops, so they're already showing me some storage cabinet, but for office was the main keyword because we're in the office niche, right? So here we are, and here you can see all of the storage cabinets. Now we are looking for a small storage cabinet, not these huge things right here. So what we can do is continue to look through it, or we can go back up here and do small storage cabinet for office and make it more specific, okay? So here we are and, oh, I see one. So this is a similar product to what we were looking for earlier. Here is the storage cabinet um, and this is a three drawer and not a two drawer. So when you're talking to manufacturers on Alibaba, you can obviously ask them to innovate it. You can be like, I only want a two drawer and see what options that they have because all of these suppliers can customize products for you. So I would just contact them right here, contact supplier. Um, you know, if you source more products from them, obviously the price goes lower and lower. But again, when you're searching or when you're sourcing from Alibaba, you wanna message a lot of people. I message at least 30 to 50 different manufacturers and I find the lowest price, the minimum order quantity, and I source that way because again, you want to source for cheap and you want to sell for high to increase your profit margins. Of course, you want your product to be really well because I focus on um, selling premium products, not just, you know, trash products like I don't want bad reviews I really am for the customer I want them to get the highest quality products so you have to be able to source really good products you got to order samples you got to go through that whole process which is why I stress that if you're trying to private label if you're trying to really um, create a brand that you do your due diligence that you take your time when it comes to sourcing and that you're finding products that are really worth your time in terms of the revenue and profit margins and not just go for products that are only making two to three to five thousand dollars per month okay so this is how i find products to sell on amazon by using black box products and you can do the same thing it takes time make sure you're tracking your data make sure you're doing a ton of searches I do this um, you know, every day for at least an hour and I write down all the potential product ideas and then I set deadlines for myself. Okay, I need to find a product within the next two weeks and I will make an educated decision based off of all the data I've been able to compile. Again, this is how I do product research. You guys see that I came across a product that I can innovate that's doing $20,000 per month and this was using Blackbox. I'm not saying I'm gonna do this product, but this was just a product example and you guys can see that you can find profitable products to sell on Amazon. I hope this video was informative. I hope it was helpful. I hope that you use this technique to find products to sell on Amazon. If you have any questions, leave them down below for me. And again, you can use the code down below to get a small little discount if you're interested in trying Helium 10 out. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will definitely get back to you. But for now, make sure you stay consistent with the product research. And if you need help using Blackbox, here is a tutorial that you can use in order to help you find and source products on Amazon.